Oh, so sleepy. Oh, so sleepy. Isn't he cute? He's like, tell me cute. that's not cute. <laughs> Molly here again and I have my gallopy goose here with me because we're doing a video all about the gallops. I don't know how much of him you can see but he's being a sleepy lazy lump as per usual. If he's not working he's sleeping and being snuggly and cute AF. So that's what he's up to today and he's rocking his own custom merch. That's right my friends. Don't forget Molly Burke and gallopy goose merch now available only till December 4th, so limited edition, get you some while you can, link pinned below. I mean, come on, tell me this sweater isn't dope. You can't because it is. Plus, like, it has the cute braille on the back, which you're not finding that anywhere else, so thumbs up for that. All right, you can see it from the title. You guys really, really enjoyed the video I did where I answered the most Googled questions about me. So I thought, why not do a guide dog user answers the most Googled questions about guide dogs. I've been using a guide dog for 11 and a half years, which is wild. I don't know where the time's gone, but I had my girl Gypsy, picture right here, for seven years. And I've had this boy right here, Gallopy Goose, for four and a half. So yeah, it's been a... It's been a long journey and I figured I've learned a lot along the way about guide dogs and I know a lot of people are curious about it so let's just get into it. I have my friend Jake here with me. He, he's gonna be doing all the googling and he's just gonna some ramble off some questions that you guys have. Let's go. What do guide dogs do? Guide dogs guide blind people. So guide dogs are one of the only forms of service dogs that actually have like their own name. They are guide dogs and service dogs. I feel like they're very separate things and communities. I don't know if it's just because like guide dogs were the first form of service dog that we've just like kept our name strong. Like we're like, we're guide dog users, not a service dog user. I don't know, it's like a weird cultural thing. Guide dogs are basically a form of service dog that specifically help guide blind people. I'll insert footage here, cause I don't have it with me, of the harness. So I basically hold that handle when it's on his back and through that he's able to lead me around objects and help me find things that I need. What do guide dogs eat? Guide dogs eat dog food. Um, I mean, of course, every dog requires a different diet. My guide dog eats Yukonuba. Every dog eats something different, I guess. They aren't allowed human food. That's like very, very strict rule is no human food. The only human food Gallup has is cheese and peanut butter and the only reason he ever like started getting that is because he had to take medicine for um like a sickness he had and the only way he'd have it was in cheese so now he or in peanut butter so he's had cheese and peanut butter and those are still the only human foods he has and the reason they're not allowed any other human food and it's like very strict is because they're always in restaurants and cafeterias things like that where they see human food and if they think it's appropriate for them to eat it they'll start lunging for food that falls on the floor or sticking their heads on tables and eating foods off plates, which is obviously very inappropriate. And they'll also just easily start getting food distracted. You know, if they see human food and think, oh, I'm allowed to eat that, they won't be focusing on their job. They'll be focusing on what they want to eat. What do guide dogs wear? I think this is a really good question because there's so many service dogs, especially nowadays, so many fake service dogs. There, you don't see as many guide dogs as general service dogs. And so people now really equate service dogs with the vests. But guide dogs don't wear vests. Guide dogs and a lot of mobility dogs wear harnesses with either firm handles if it's a mobility stabilization dog or loose harnesses if it's a guide dog. Um, so oftentimes people will come up to me when I'm in public and they're like, sorry, we don't allow dogs. I'm like, it's my guide dog. And they're like, well, why isn't it wearing a vest? I'm like, because it's a guide dog. It's not a service dog. Guide dogs wear harnesses, not vests. So that's what they wear. What do guide dog charities do? Basically, unfortunately, guide dogs are not government funded, so the only way a person like myself who's blind and needs a guide dog can get one is through charities. So, um, for example, the Mira Foundation, which I will link below, if you ever are looking for a charity to donate to, I cannot recommend them enough. What they do is incredible. And if you're ever looking for a guide dog, can't recommend them enough. Basically, they fundraise and all of that money goes towards the training, the breeding of the dogs, and the housing of the dogs for the two years of their life while they're being trained and then they're 
given to the blind person who needs them for free, which is amazing because on average, depending on the guide dog school, um, any like training of a guide dog from like the breeding to the end result of graduation can cost anywhere between twenty and sixty thousand dollars. I believe um, I believe the Mira Foundation quotes it around forty thousand, which is obviously a lot of money. And with eighty percent of blind people being unemployed and living below the poverty line, we could never afford these dogs, and it really makes a huge difference to our lives. <laughs> what do guide dogs look like? I mean, they look like dogs in harness. Typically, they're labs, golden retrievers, or crosses, but you know, mine were also like Gallup's half Bernese Mountain Dog, half Black Lab. Gypsy was three quarters Bernese Mountain Dog, one quarter Lab. They could be purebred Bernese Mountain Dogs, standard Poodles. I've even heard of like Fischlas. German Shepherds are really common. German Shepherds were actually the first guide dog breed used because um, guide dogs were first started in Germany with soldiers who came back blind from the war. So German Shepherds were the dogs they first used. So there's a whole host of breeds, but usually they're in a harness and that's the most distinguishing, distinguishing feature of a guide dog. They're definitely never a small breed though. Where do guide dogs get trained? There is a bunch of different training schools. I believe there's about 12 in the United States. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's the last number I heard. And then I think there's about three to five in Canada. And then of course you could also get them privately trained or owner trained, but guide dog schools to me is like the safest, easiest, most reputable way to go about it. Where do guide dogs sit on planes? That's such a good question, especially, you know, since Gallopy here is a frequent flyer, I wish you could collect frequent flyer miles cause girl, this dog has traveled the world and back. They sit at our feet. If there's room on the plane, and every airline has different rules, if there's room on the plane, most times they'll give me the extra seat so that we have more leg room for him, especially because my guide dog in particular, being half Bernese Mountain Dog, is large. He's 90 pounds, he has very long legs, so it's always helpful. They'll sometimes put us in the bulkhead. It's always nice if a client books me like first class or business class, because then there's definitely enough room for us. But yeah, they basically sit at our feet and try to curl up under the seat in front of us. They usually just fall asleep, like Gallup couldn't care less, he doesn't even notice. He gets excited when we go to the airport because he knows he's getting to go somewhere new and refreshing. But yeah, that's where they sit. They never go below with the cargo. They just sit with us. Oh, also I did a video flying with Gallup to Europe. Um, on the plane where I actually show you the whole rigmarole of getting through the airport into another country. So I'll link that video below. Highly recommend. Yes, Grandma's home. You stay with me. Yes, no. Gallop. What did I just say? I just said for you to stay with me. Gallop! Gallop, viens! Get up! My own guide dog won't even listen. Come here. Thank you. Don't show me your butt. Show me your face. Thanks. People only watch if you're here. So oh, are you being grumpy and groany? Where do guide dogs go to the bathroom on cruise ships? What a good question. Honestly, I had never even thought of it until a few years ago when I was going on vacation. I was like, wait a second. But cruise ships, they thought about it. They've got it all figured out. Usually what they'll do is like most cruise ship bedrooms have um, a private balcony. And on the private balcony, they will put a toileting facility for the dog. So usually it'll be like a giant vat of wood chips or a giant thing of fake grass that the dog can go out onto the little private patio and do his thing. Where do guide dogs go when they retire? Another great question. Again, it depends on the guide dog school. So some guide dog schools, you're basically like leasing or renting the dog. When it's not yours anymore, it like goes back to them. So when it retires, it goes back to the guide dog school and the guide dog school like figures it out from there, uh, usually adopts it out. And other guide dog schools, like once it graduates, that dog is yours. There's pros and cons to both situations, but in that situation, you get to pick. So, you know, you could either keep it as a pet, which if you're planning on getting a new guide dog, isn't the most advisable because it can be difficult for the old dog to see because they really do genuinely love working. And it can also be difficult for your bonding because you're so attached to the old dog that it can be hard to build 
a new working relationship with the new one. You can do that, but it's not like the guide dog schools don't usually like love when you do that. Usually I would say in most cases it gets adopted out to friends or family. So in my case, my parents would take Gallup. In the case of Gypsy, she never actually retired. She passed away while she was still in service, which was a whole nother story. Um, very difficult. Um, yeah, my parents will take him, but usually close family friends or parents, and if not, it'll go back to the school and they'll adopt it out to a family. Why do guide dogs walk on the left? Um, in my case, I'm left-handed, which was nice because it was a super easy transition from using my cane with my left hand to having a guide dog in my left hand. But I can imagine for cane users who are right-handed and then have to switch to left-handed harness, that would be kind of tricky. So in that way, I feel like I was lucky. But it's basically because of the flow of traffic it's so that when you're walking the correct side of the street, because you're always supposed to be going against the flow of traffic, so the guide dog is on the inner side. Why do guide dogs look so sad? They don't! <laughs> I feel like it's not that they look sad, it's that they're focused. Guide dogs genuinely love what they do. If they didn't, they, they let us know. Like, I know people who have had to retire their guide dogs after only like a year or two or three of work, even though typical guide dogs work from six to eight years of service. Um, because their dogs showed them that they weren't happy anymore and they didn't like it and in that case they get early retirement No guide dog is forced to work if they don't want to when Gallup sees the harness he gets so excited In fact, there's times when I'm just trying to put the harness away like go hang it up And he like puts his head inside of it to get to work and he, I'm like no we're not going to work like it's not time yet but they love what they do and the moment it's not right they get retired it's not that they're sad it's a like most dogs can't smile, so it's hard to look happy. And B, it's focused. Like, I don't have RBF, but I feel like sometimes I might look like I do if I'm out and about. So if you ever see me, don't be afraid of me if I'm, like, looking serious. It's that I'm focused because as a blind person, like, I'm always listening to navigate and, like, paying close attention to my surroundings. So I get a very serious face. Or, like, if you're writing a test, you don't, like, you're not smiling writing your math test. You're, like, serious. You're focused. And so I feel like guide dogs, they just have their, like, serious focused I'm working face on. It's not a sad face. How do guide dogs know when to cross the road? Another great question that I get asked very frequently and that I feel like has a lot of misconceptions around it. Guide dogs don't know when to cross the road is the answer. They are trained to have obedient disobedience, which basically means if you tell them to do something and they don't think it's the right thing to do for safety reasons, they will refuse to do it. So if I told Gallup to cross the street and he saw that cars were coming, he wouldn't let me cross. He wouldn't walk. If I tell him to cross and he's like, yeah, I don't see any reason not to, he listens to me and he crosses the street. So basically it's up to the blind person to determine when it's right to cross the street and when it's not using our ears. And if you guys would be interested in seeing a video of my orientation and mobility, whether it be with a cane or a guide dog or even both, showing you how I navigate an environment, how I cross streets using my ears, all of that kind of thing, I'd be really happy to do it. So just comment below and let me know if that's something you're interested in. I feel like I'm going to end off on this question because I think I've been rambling for long enough. How do guide dogs know where you want to go? Again, like they kind of don't. It's a lot of communication between the two of us. So there is certain times where I'll say something like front door and he knows where I live so he'll take me to the front door. Or I'll say Starbucks and he knows where Starbucks is because I go a lot so he'll know where to go. So there's certain places he has learned and I can just say the word and he'll walk me there. But other than that, like, it's commanding them. So I'll tell him to go left or right. He only speaks French because he was born and raised in Quebec, which is a French speaking part of Canada. Um, so all his commands are in French, but a lot of guide, most guide dogs are in English if they're in North America. So, you know, left, right, forward, turn around, find the door, find stairs. You just use commands and using their training and what they know and understand, they figure it out. So that's really how they know where you want to go. It's teamwork. They'll get you around the objects when they see it in your way and that kind of thing. But usually like if I'm walking down the street and he sees somewhere that I frequently go, he'll guide me there and then I'll tell him like, yeah, good job. You're right. We do go there a lot, but we're not going there this time. So keep going forward. And then he'll be like, oh, okay. And he'll keep walking. So that's pretty much how it goes. It's a lot of memorization on the part of the blind person memorizing basically your whole environment, where things are located, how many streets you have to cross, when you have to turn left, how many lighted intersections there are, how many doors in till you turn, a lot of muscle memory in your feet and in your brain, and it's a lot of teamwork, right? We're a good team. I love you.
You're my best friend. All right, that is all for today's video. If you guys found this interesting, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. I have a dog hair from kissing him. <laughs> if you want more content like this, hit subscribe. Join the Killer Bee Club. We got lots of fun swag around now. Um, and don't forget to shop my merch while it's still available. Link below. Oh, and turn on the bell, because, like, you want to be notified as soon as this stuff comes out so you can see more of this cuteness right back here. All right, I love you guys so very much. Thank you for all your love and support that you always show. I couldn't appreciate it more. See you next time. <laughs>